presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. City, Detroit, Michigan, to meet one of the most respected and illustrious car designers of our era, Mr. Tom Gale. And as a special treat, Tom will unveil his newly painted, custom, state-of-the-art hot rod that he built from ground up, as well as take us for a special peek into his own garage. Then, we go out west to the biggest VW car show in the world, the 2001 VW Classic, where we'll meet people who are crazy about their bugs. Don't go away, Car Crazy will be right back. Raised in a General Motors family, Tom Gale surprised everyone when he jumped ship and joined the competition in 1967. Upon graduation from Michigan State University, he joined the Chrysler Corporation. He has held many positions in design at Chrysler, eventually becoming Executive like Vice President for Design and Product Development. Tom Gale is one of America's most respected automotive designers. He is responsible for some of the best known cars to come out of Detroit, like the 70 Cuda, Dodge Challenger, Prowler, Viper, and the PT Cruiser. His creative pen has ignited the imagination of that little boy in all of us, as he's designed the best received concept cars in the last few decades. During his illustrious career at Chrysler, Tom has seen many changes, from the low of the 70s to the completion of a spectacular, state-of-the-art Chrysler Center that has put out some of the most amazing automobiles on the road today. Chrysler's multi-billion dollar merger with the Daimler-Benz Corporation. Tom Gale's stewardship of Chrysler's design department has left an indelible mark on our automotive future. He is a car guy's car guy, and he's responsible for Chrysler's aggressive support of the collector car hobby. From vintage races, to car shows, to collector car auctions, and often enjoying them personally. Tom, uh, you, are, you are Mr. Enthusiasm for this hobby, I must say, and it's uh, so great to be with you here in your office. Well, thank you. It's uh, wonderful to have you here at the Chrysler Technology Center, and it's great as a consultant to have an office here at the center, so uh, welcome. <laughs> Tom, how did this lifelong passion for cars first begin? Well, I, I think it was uh, just an errant gene, uh, but uh, certainly from my folks. But uh, my father and my grandfather worked for uh, Buick at General Motors Corporation for years. What year was it when you first started in design, actual in design? Well, I uh, came to Chrysler in December of 67. I can remember getting here, and I'm looking through all the products, and there wasn't any cars I wanted to drive. You know, I just turned in my Buick Grand Sport, and I thought, oh, man, what am I going to do? And, and the only one I really liked was a 67 Barracuda, and, and so got a 67 Barracuda. And then my real influence on the company probably, you know, really couldn't be seen until after I became head of design and, 85, and then it takes a few years to, to be able to do things. But, yeah. uh, so the yeah. period of the 90s was the period that I'm really proud of. So what was the first project uh, that you worked on that you felt really good about? Well, when I started uh, in advanced engineering, right in 1966 and 1967, started working on the 70 Cuda and Challenger. Well, there are a lot of very emotional people about their Cudas today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it goes on and on. It sure does. <laughs> Well, we just uh, got back uh, a week ago. I was on the, the power tour across the country, and, and uh, uh, you know, on any, any given point, there were maybe 700 folks traveling across country, and, and 
uh, very proud of what they're doing. And it's just wonderful to meet and talk to people in all walks of life, doing yeah. you know, all kinds of things. And the one common bond is that people just have this love affair with, isn't uh, that with it? automobiles. Isn't that it? But uh, the area of interest for me was always kind of hot rods, uh, classics, sports cars, and muscle cars. You know, those were the things that were probably most influential during my formative years, during the 60s and, and 50s. You know. Tell us about the Viper, the birth of the Viper. This has to be a great story. Well, the Viper uh, came about uh, just after a brief meeting with Bob Lutz. We had been talking about doing something like, uh, you know, the mid-60s Cobra for a long time. And, uh, you know, just always one priority or another and never really got around to it. And we just finally got serious about it because what I really wanted to do was build the concept car for January of 1989 and at the Detroit show. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the beginning of it. And uh, so that's why I kind of was really jamming to get the car done. And then from there, we built the concept car uh, at Metal Crafters and we built that first one in steel. Viper was a symbol for the change that was really going on inside the company. And being a hot rodder, I mean a true hot rodder, uh, bringing up the current day hot rod in the form of the Prowler had to be one of your uh, most fun moments anyway. Oh yeah, I was the resident hot rod freak and I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do. And, and what's really kind of neat and kind of gratifying is back in 1988, believe me, we were the only ones doing anything that was retro. And by the time it got to 93, okay. we were all by ourselves still. When you think of the Viper, you think of the Prowler, the Howler, and this PT Cruiser. I mean, these are all cars that uh, became collector cars the moment they were sold off the showroom floor. The Cruiser really was an image car for the masses. I mean, it was, it was now an opportunity to have uh, an image car at a, at a price that was surprisingly affordable. And, and I think that's part of its, its success. And then in the middle of all this, uh, the coming together of these two behemoth companies when we have Daimler-Benz and Chrysler Corporation merging together. What's it been like to be in the center of, the epicenter of all this activity? Well, it's been an honor to be part of the Board of Management uh, as, as anything else you, you always learn as you go through life. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's fascinating to watch uh, how uh, the things operate in a totally different system from what uh, we were used to as Chrysler. And uh, of course, only time will tell whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, I suppose. But, uh, but I think, you know, everybody put an awful lot of energy into trying to make, uh, in trying to make things work. And this business always comes back to the people. Sometimes it comes down to the intangibles of design. And I've always said that uh, you know, good design adds value faster than it adds cost. If it's nothing more than taking that to the business schools of a few places and to the design schools, I, I'll be active in a lot of places. Good to hear. Good design increases value faster than increases cost. That's, that's a gem. That's a gem. Hey, um, can we take a break and uh, go look at the, the, the personal manifestation of all your passion in this hot rod that you just I would completed? love to. I would love Let's to. Thanks. Be sure to stay tuned because we're heading into the studio for a private photo shoot of Tom Gale's personal hot rod. Welcome back to Car Crazy. Tom Gale officially retired from Daimler Chrysler in 2001, but he still has that itch to design and build cars. We snuck our cameras into a closed photo shoot for a peek at Tom's hot rod. Okay, hang on a second, I gotta change the film. Okay. Tom, I can't even imagine how many magazines are going to be running all these photos that we're seeing right at this moment. And while we got a break, tell us a little bit about the car. Well, it's uh, something I've wanted to do for ages. And uh, this all started when uh, I came home and wanted to buy a 33 Ford Coupe at one time. And my father talked me out of it. So now I'm kind of getting even. But uh, this here is uh, started out as a 33 Roadster, all hand formed aluminum body. Uh, all of these panels were really made over a wood buck and then uh, hammer welded and uh, put together the doors, the door outers. You'll notice it doesn't have a cowl and a much more rounded windshield than what it would have had. Powertrain is a supercharged uh, Chrysler V8, uh, 5.9 liters hooked to a torque flight. Independent front and rear, it's uh, Indy style, uh, twin A arms in the front and then the rear is uh, like a Jag, but with fabricated hub carriers and coilovers, and then the uh, inboard mounted discs. It runs a Dana 44 and a 
410 rear gear. And it's a total custom one-off chassis? The chassis is all fabricated, basically. Uh, the frame rails have been shaped on the bottom so that you could get a line that didn't kick up over what was the front axle. And then the, uh, the body has also been wedge channeled, so it means that it gets a little bit more aggressive gesture. The ultimate hot rod. Well, it's uh, a lot of modern touches, but also a lot of nostalgia. I think uh, when you look at the forms, they're pretty true to the uh, mid to late 30s. Uh, the rounded windshield is reminiscent of what was uh, uh, Hot Rodder's modification back then, which would have been a Duvall windshield, but it would have had flat glass and a split, and I wanted something just a little bit more modern, so we created this look. Uh, but a lot of details, though, uh, still are pretty honest to the 30s, you know, whether it's a little reveal or the line that runs through the bottom of the chassis. Those are all uh, part of the uh, form vocabulary of the 30s. This has just been a labor of love, and uh, frankly, this is, this is like a painting to uh, any other kind of artist. Uh, to me, uh, the art is in the form, you know, whether it's the subtlety of the wind split or the little bit of a badge, a wing badge that has got that feel for heritage, and uh, kind of trying to make uh, such an outrageous statement a little bit understated. That's why we went back to black here and kind of, kind of tried to get it to just go away a little bit. Barry, when this is all over, would you like to go for a ride? Oh boy, would I? First drive out the garage, you bet. Well, we'll fire it up and see if we can't get it out of here. Now this is gonna be a great ride by every kind of definition. As Chrysler's design chief, Tom Bial could have any car out of Chrysler Stadium, but like everybody else, he has his favorites too, as is evident in his garage. So here we are at Tom Gale's garage, and hey Tom, this is a cool place. Well, thank you. This is where uh, I have to, this is my doghouse, so to speak. This is where I might get to spend a night every now and then. But. <laughs> How many years you guys been married? 35 years. 35 year. years to so, beat the odds. And, well, uh, and it's because you share that passion. I think that's a big part of it. You both have the same love. Well, I think uh, it's wonderful, and I certainly appreciate what she does. But uh, anyway, this is the garage, and uh, in the garage are some, some more of the pride and joy here. The car behind us, the yellow car, yeah. is... Uh, 70 AA Arcuda, which uh, was really the production version of the cars that Dan Gurney campaigned in Trans Am racing in 1970. And I've had it yeah. for a bunch of years and restored it about, oh, probably 10 years ago. And if I get a hankering to change the exhaust system or to lower it or whatever, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll do that. But you got a couple of really neat Vipers here. Well, they're, uh, they're unique and uh, this, uh, uh, coupe is uh, a 96 GTS and it's the fourth one, it's serial number 004. And then uh, the black one over there is uh, the old show car. It was the first black one uh, and we won't tell Jay Leno, he got the first production <laughs> black one, but this was a this was a pre-prototype <laughs> car and it was the car that was in all the magazine photography and that magazine photo that you see yeah, on the wall is, yeah. uh, is actually that car. And now in this setting, let's go back. Getting ready for that driver's license. Um, what were your thoughts at that time? How did, uh, how did you get into the whole driving experience? Uh, my first car was a 53 Chevy Bel Air two-door hardtop. Then I was fortunate enough, you know, the, the year I graduated from high school, to have the car that uh, was my grandfather's, and it was a 55 Chevy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of fueled the passion for really getting into design in a major way. It's still interesting to me. Here you grew up in Flint, Michigan, home of Buick Motor Division. You drove uh, Chevys when you were a teenager and you ended up at Chrysler. I mean, it was an interesting turn of uh, events for you. My father, uh, bless his heart, I wish he could still be around because uh, uh, to his credit, he never said a word. Uh, came home and announced I was gonna go to Chrysler. And, Must have felt like uh, a traitor or something. Just, well, I, I, a little I'm, I'm bit, little but you know, he never said a word. He said, uh, you know, he said, that's, that's good. He said, that's your choice. And, I've always thought back, you know, I wish I could do the same for my boys, you know, because uh, uh, it was just nothing but supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I wish uh, I wish my dad were around to see some of the things yeah. we've done. And, wow. and I know he'd be, uh, I wow. know he'd be so proud. Tom, it's been so great to, to be with you. We can just go on and on all your great stories. Uh, I am proud to know you as my friend and I uh, can't thank you enough for joining us today. This has just been really, really special. Well, thank you. It's a great honor and it's always great to see you. So and I've enjoyed it very much. Car craze is not over yet. We're going buggy when we come back. It's easy to understand why coach boat cars like the Delahaye, the Duesenberg, 
or prize for their rarity. But the Volkswagen Beetle has become a collector car because of its popularity. On February 17, 1972, the 15 millionth Beetle rolled off the assembly line in Wolfsburg, Germany, making it the most popular car in the world. We visited the 2001 VW Classic in Irvine, California, the largest VW show in the world. Over 40 classes of VWs were on display, and many of the people were so crazy about their Volkswagens, you could call them buggies. To many owners, a bug is like a blank canvas ready to be painted. Gregory Garza doused his in bright orange. It's a 1968 Volkswagen Beetle, and I've been driving bugs for about 17 years now. My first car was a bug at the age of about 15. And just the simplicity of them and how much power you can make out of the motors with minimal work. It took me a year to do the car, and I finished it basically yesterday and drove it here today. Well, the engine is a 19... 14 cc VW engine. It redlines somewhere around 8,500 RPMs, and it'll probably do maybe about 125 on the freeway. Although it's not exactly a classic yet, today's new Beetle carries forth the charm that's certain to make it a classic, just like its older brother. I loved the Volkswagens because they were inexpensive when I was uh, raising my family, and uh, when they came out with a new one, I just had to have it, and then. As time went on, <laughs> it turned into a monster. Most of the new Beetles are, are more Euro racer style, and I decided to go to the retro style and the hot rod. I was born in uh, Southern California and grew up here, graduated from high school in the 60s, so the flames and hot rods were something that really stuck with me. And when I wanted to have a real neat car, I wanted to put flames on it, so here we are. Hot rods have always been in my blood with my father instilling it, really. You go down the road and everybody gives me the thumbs up and smiles, and it's, it's a real uh, eye catcher. Not all Volkswagens are bugs. As a matter of fact, some of the more popular models are considered to be buses. I used to have a Volkswagen bus when I was in college. That was like a love affair that started years ago. And then we decided after we raised a family we could do it again. It's a 67 Westphalia VW Camper. So we bought this bus and a week after we got it the engine blew and so we had to do a bunch of work to it and that was about three years ago. I made the tent and then the cushions, you know, the chairs, everything that's fun to do and um, redid the roof, did the canvas and everything. It's got cupboards. Um, like underneath you put your stove, we put the stove in there and the little cook camper thing goes under there and then the seat lifts up and you keep your tools under there and um, all the windows are louvers like the old 50s houses where you open them this way so you get lots of air movement. The pop top's nice because when you go camping you can just open the windows and you got air coming and going. It's more than just a vehicle, it's an experience. You know, people say, oh, we'll have fun when we get there. No, you have fun as soon as you get in. That's when you have fun. <laughs> we camp in it about, I'd say about every four months. We go somewhere, either to the mountains or the beach, usually the beach. And even if you don't, we have a big place, a big backyard and a pit, campfire style. So we just pull it up with our friends and we just camp in the backyard. <laughs> Don't go away, folks. We're taking a look at some of the rare and unusual VWs when Car Crazy returns. Welcome back to Car Crazy. Although Volkswagen is a major mass producer of the automobile, they've even made a few obscure beauties that many of us have not seen on these shores. It's a 1956 uh, Romesh Beast Cow. It's a, an all aluminum coach built Volkswagen. Romesh built about 250 Beast Cows total, of which there's about 29 as far as I can tell. It originally won uh, the Golden Rose of Geneva uh, for, for automobile design. Romesh was mostly known for building four door taxi cabs, which is kind of a funny little business when you look at a car like this and see it kind of fluid lines and then you see that their main business was building taxi cabs. I've been chasing these cars for 15 years before I found one for sale and so when it comes up you just pay the price whatever it is. It has a, about a 70 horsepower motor called an Okrasa which is a hot rod Volkswagen motor from the period. 
and it performs great. It goes 85 miles an hour down the freeway if you want to. An amazing amount of hours, you know, over a year, I'd say, of, of labor in the car. I've been driving it around a little bit. I've only got about 200 miles on it since I finished it because we were just dialing in all the little details. It's just a beautiful body style. I like the way, I like 300 SL Mercedes, and this is a very similar car, a little earlier design. And I own old 356 Porsches and other old Volkswagen weird cars. I uh, was brought home from the hospital in a, when I was born in a Volkswagen. And my first car was a Volkswagen bus. And I've been through the gamut. And I, I, I had a company, I started a company and I sold a bunch of Volkswagens that I owned, a bunch of kind of cool cars to fund the startup of the company. The company got really big and I sold it off and since retired and have devoted myself back to the Volkswagen hobby again to, to find the rarest that I can find and restore them. I love it. It's, it's, my, it's my mecca. Another unique VW is the Italian design Carmen Ghia. And Brad Lang from Canada traveled over 1,500 miles in his drop-top Ghia to share his passion with other enthusiasts. I've been a Volkswagen fan for many years. My mom and dad both drove Volkswagens when, you know, 20 years ago. and. I built a couple of Volkswagens prior, so I've always been a big fan of Volkswagens. I've had it for six years, but really time building, about four and a half years. Ever since I was building the car, the VW Classic was the show I wanted to debut it at, and so we left with about 250 miles on the car, and it was about a 1,500 mile trek to get here. It ran good, no problems at all. I built the car from the ground up, doing all the paint and body work and suspension stuff, and I wanted, to, I wanted a more of a street rod look than a Volkswagen look because uh, the Volkswagen look is kind of a lot of the same and I just want a more of a street rod quality to it. My dad used to make performance parts for Volkswagens back in the uh, early 70s for all the big companies that are still around today. He did all the wiring on the car and a lot of support and ideas and I'll probably build another Carmen Kia. I just love the shape of them but I got already got plans of what to do so I'd all up in the air still you never know. That or a hot rod, who knows. The response has been really good to the car. It's just been overwhelming with people, how much they like it and like how different it is from all the rest. It's, it's made all the time spent worthwhile. Well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the Meguiar's family of appearance car care products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.